I remember you said you were, uh, I think you're, you're, you're already getting close to plat three, right? And I am going to be drinking coffee during the cast, so I kind of apologize ahead of time, but I need it. Yeah, keep climbing that ladder, man. All right, let's get straight into it here. In the bottom right-hand corner of the map, it is the Red Terran Gill. His opponent in the top left, the Blue Zerg, Exile. When I see this name, Gill, I always think of the movie What About Bob. Not sure if you've seen it, but... Bill Murray, who plays Bob, has a goldfish named Gil, whom he takes everywhere he goes. Hilarity ensues, as they say. So if I'm not mistaken, Exile's build of choice is usually Hatch, Gas, Pool, which is actually what I like to do when I play Zerg as well. Yeah. <laughs> He ta uh, takes Gil on the bus. Well, I, f I forget what the heck he says. Obviously, I'm going to butcher it, but he's like, uh, asks if he can get uh, get some air or, you know, get a breath of fresh air because he's about to scream because Gil is about to scream. That part always cracks me up. It is indeed Hatch Gas Pool. On the Terran end of things, we have a standard Reaper expansion by the looks of it so far. No gas first or anything like that. Wait, so this game gave you uh, half of your points for Tier 1 to get up uh, to get to Tier 1? Or you're already in Tier 1 and... It's half of your points to get into Plat 3. Okay, so it's actually not a Reaper expansion. It's... Which is fine, too. Uh, you can Every once in a while, I will do this. Get my gas at the normal time for a Reaper expansion, but build Marines instead. But what you should do with these is send them out to try to snipe Overlords. They're not going to do much good here. And you definitely need scouting information. <clears throat> Speed coming down at a normal time. I'm hoping we get to see some more burrowed play. Or possibly proxied tech from exile. Always makes for a good time. Okay, to get up to tier 1. Okay, yeah, so you're already in uh, gold 1. And this, gets, this here gets you halfway through gold... Uh, Gold one. Awesome. Yeah, like I was saying before, I could tell that, uh, especially like uh, your your macro is on uh, a higher level than your opponents. So it's pretty clear that you got placed low and kind of had to grind your way back up. Tank coming out. As well as a starport, usually in TVZ, a tank at this time is going to be for a very defensive build, or at least indicates a very defensive mindset. In TVP or TVT, of course, you can do early pushes with tanks. But obviously, given that they're early, you will have low numbers of tanks. And that same type of push does not really work in TVZ unless it's a really abusive position like on King Sejong Station where you could park your tanks behind the rocks and hit the natural, things like that. But generally speaking, tanks in low numbers out in the open will just get swarmed by Zerglings. So those early game tank pushes do not really work in TVZ. So as I said, just indicates a defensive build. Nice scout there. From Exile. I love that fast Overlord speed as well. By the way, I say that all the time when, uh, especially when Brogue and I were discussing some imp uh, improvements that he can make uh, to his game, and we were going over scouting and ZVT, and he was saying that some pro players uh, and like semi pro slash GM players were saying that they think Overlord speed is worthless and then others are saying it's really important and i said from a terran perspective 
I hate when Zergs get that fast Overlord speed because there's nothing I can do to deny that scout. And we just saw it there. It just went through the entire main base was taking fire from two marines and still got out. Got a full scout and gets out. And you, like I said, you can't do anything about it. Now, obviously, with these turrets up, that's going to be a different story. But that early scout is often the most important the one. Queen has emerged. Dang. 40 point win. <laughs> that's pretty serious. That's such a great feeling, too. It's not a great feeling when you lose 40, but when you get that 40-point win, it's fantastic. One thing I was thinking about the other day, I think I mentioned it on stream, too. Uh, by the way, this is actually going to be shut down pretty hard. Should be shut down pretty hard. Great positioning here on the Spore Crawler and on the Queen. It's actually double Liberator, which is quite an investment. Not yet seen here by Exile. But yeah, this Spore Crawler alone is going to go a long way toward pushing these back. Yep, there we go. Nice job. Good defense. But uh, as I was saying, so random players who get their main race, one of the most annoying things in the game is when you go against a random player who gets their main race, and obviously like their random is going to be at least a couple of hundred points below their main race. Few kills on the Liberator, three, so not bad, not great. I would definitely rather be the Zerg in this position, killing a Liberator for three drones. In fact, did that other Liberator go down? Yes, it did. I don't even, did the Spore Crawler get it? No, it must have been the other Queen. There it is, yes. But anyway, so obviously I'm not talking about people who main random, but people who just off race as random, and they land their main race. This happened to me the other day. Fortunately, I won it, but I played a Protoss who was uh, 5137 with Protoss, but he was off racing as random, and he was like 4600 as random. It was a really, really close game. In fact, it's the game that I uploaded to YouTube. A really close game. I almost lost. And if I would have lost, it would have been as though I lost to a 4600 when, in fact, his Protoss is actually over 5100. But that has happened to me before where I've lost against, like, 4,300 players who, you know, got their main race, which was, like, 46, 4,700. I end up losing a ton of points. It's really, really discouraging. What's up, Florencio? Oh, dang. Already going to work? Oh, and sweet, Exile, you saw that game. Yeah, that game was pretty wild. But yeah, so Florencio, I'm uh, getting these casts in. As you can see, I already contacted Nakamura to ask him when he will be available to cast your game. So, And actually, he sent a game for me to cast as well. So my plan right now is to cast this game from Exile, which is going pretty well for Exile right now, uh, I must say. But yeah, so I'm going to cast this game here from Exile. We'll do Nakamura's game, and as soon as he's available, we're going to get your game. One thing I will point out in this game right now, nice job here, really nice job, coming in, picking off these tanks. Of course, the planetary will clean this up. The second tank actually looks like it's going to just barely survive, but it's a good scout there for Exile. He does not yet know about this. Oh, wow, actually he does. Silverlord is just in position. So I was about to point out that things are going well for Exile right now, but one thing to be wary of is the fact that mech, once mech hits four bases, it's already going to be really powerful once it gets up the gases on the fourth base, the seventh and eighth gas. Now, when we're talking about a fourth and a fifth base, that's like that's a mech player's dream. They're basically going to be able to make whatever they want. Speaking of making what Ever you want. We've got pathogen glands and infestors on the way, as well as hive for exile. So this is just a, a good solid macro game so far, and again with excellent map vision. I just I love this so much. I'm gonna point it out every single time. Look at this. Again, if we take a comparison, look at this. Almost the entire map 
is seen, with the exception of this drop path, but that's preempted by the vision here and here. Uh, so if a drop is coming through this way, it should be spotted first in any one of these paths. If we take a look at the vision from the mech player, it is completely confined to his own base. So he has absolutely no idea what's going on. That can be a bit dangerous for him. I mean, it's dangerous for Terran in general. Bio can't sit in the base, but with mech, you want to know how many, uh, for example, how many Thors you need, or do you need Vikings, etc. Because if, for example, um, we had a hive rush from Exile and he's going straight up to Greater Spire, then that will require a very specific response from the mech player. If he's going for something like Ultralisks right away, then it might require a slightly different response. These stores are uh, some of the boldest stores I've ever seen, and so far it's going to work out pretty well in picking off these overlords and getting a supply block, but... I don't envision a scenario in which these Thors make it home alive, and typically pushing out as mech at 120 supply does not end well. I think Exile is going to bear testament to that right now. Four Thors go down, as well as a handful of Hellbats, and that is definitely a trade that favors our Zerg player. I do like this engineering bay wall off, though. Obviously, more hit points than Supply Depot. Speaking of, how many hit points do Supply Depots have? 400. I actually didn't even know that. And yeah, more, so more than double the hit points for the engineering base and only marginally more expensive. 125 minerals as opposed to 100. So, you know what? Maybe I should even do this more often. I mean, obviously, Bio needs minerals more than Mech. And by a bio player that's playing well is usually super low on minerals throughout the game. They're floating gas. But at the same time, in a game where, a longer game where a fifth base is taken and sixth base and whatnot, I think you can definitely work this in. As I said, it's only marginally more expensive. Definitely worth it for the hit points. 25 more minerals. Oh, here we go. Another Thor goes down. Yeah, 25 more minerals, so I don't know what it is. I'm not going to do the math right now. I'm going to approximate the math, but you're talking about what, like 20, 25% more cost for over two times the return uh, in terms of hit points. Good job here from uh, from this little squad of roaches picking off. The base does get canceled, but so far we've got Exile really confining Gil to his fishbowl, if you will. That's specifically for you, Exile, knowing that you have, in fact, seen What About Bob. <laughs> Tank is getting some shots off here. Looks like Exile wants to pick off that wall and move away. I do like that. He should not overcommit in that position. Smart engagement so far by Exile. Really good creep spread. She needs to start spreading it up this way and all will be good. Upgrades are at 2-2 for the Roach Ravager. I don't... Yeah, so 3-3 uh, is not yet on the way, as we can see up here. And for our mech player, plus 2 plating and plus 3 attack. And yeah, Florencio, I'm absolutely certain I will enjoy the replay. SCV coming out here, is he going to try to take a ninja? Yeah, it's like a semi-ninja. Apparently he doesn't want the forward location. But this is going to be spotted, and this all goes back to what I was saying earlier regarding that great map vision from Exile. He's going to send in this squad, and this has exactly zero chance of surviving. So Gil abandons the idea of the engineering bay wall and opts for the supply depot wall. Actually creating a lot of little choke points here, which I, I like a lot. I like to do this a lot, especially against Zerg. You get units filtering in through here and then taking splash damage. You can really mess up Ultralisks that way in particular. So we do have 3-3 three, three on the way now for Exile, plus 3 plating. Just starting for Gil. I 
don't think he has ship weapons yet. Let's find out. No, he does not yet have ship weapons. One thing I will point out is Exile definitely wants to look to be taking a fifth base pretty darn soon, considering that the mech player is taking, or I should say, um, trying to take his own fifth base. That is, oh, just out of range there. We have a huge engagement. Do have a concave for exile, as well as blinding clouds going down on the Thors. If they could have just got back a little farther and hit the tanks, I think he would have taken this engagement very convincingly. But I do understand his reluctance to fly the Vipers over the Thors, so it's just a, a bit of a difficult engagement to manage there. And this one definitely favors Gil. I think that was one of those engagements that's pretty tough to judge. Now, I was not sure which way it would go. I think maybe if the Blinding Clouds could have gotten to the tanks, maybe it would have gone Exile's way. But again, he would have had to fly the Vipers over the Thors. And, and that's always a very dangerous proposition. Also, oh dear goodness. Yeah, Lings are going to shred this. But I was about to say, also, that battle did occur prior to 3-3 finishing. For exile, so he was at an upgrade disadvantage. It was a bit of an anti-timing. Perhaps waiting, uh, waiting for three three to finish would have been better. But at the same time, it's one of those scenarios where, especially when you're playing against a mech player, the longer you wait, the more turtled he's going to be. So again, just sort of a, a difficult, a difficult, uh, difficult situation to assess. Later, Florencio. Have a good one, man. Look forward to casting your games, and of course I will be putting them up on YouTube. Have a good day at work. So we've got a tank push out. You don't see this too often. Tank push out while we have a Zergling run by. A lot of friendly fire triggered. Zerglings themselves putting in some work as well. Looks like the tanks want to secure this location here. Scan should be going down to get rid of this creep tumor. There it goes. So we do have Gil getting set up, and we do have Exile now taking his fifth base. He is quite a ways behind in supply, but don't let that fool you. He has a bank, and he's going up to double spire, which of course means greater spires should be on the way, and upgrades can be, uh, can be researched simultaneously. Okay, uh, now that I think about it, it doesn't necessarily have to be greater spire. Um, it can just be double upgrades for air, and that works just as well. I think usually when I see Double Spire, it's usually uh, Greater Spire and upgrades on the other and then going into Double Upgrades after, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. It can just be straight up Double Upgrades. So Swarm Hosts look like they're about to take down this base. They just barely do right at the end of their lives. Nice little parting shot for them. <laughs> and this is a frightening squadron here. I've got these... Uh, four full energy infestors with, I'm going to say like 25 maybe, 21 swarm hosts with nine more on the way and three more infestors. Hellbats and Thors pushing out to clear some more creep plus one flyers. Okay, so my initial assessment was right. It is in fact greater spire and upgrades, which personally I do think is the best choice because you can always just go into the double upgrades after. It's good to have that Broodlord tech available as soon as possible. Swarm Host's gonna free unit the crap out of this mech army. Check it out. Oh, no chance. <clears throat> this base is now scouted by Gil. This is a really, really expensive trade for Gil, by the way. To lose all of those Thors. And once the Broodlords come in, he's going to really wish he had those back. This Thor is actually going to be... A, uh, he's going to attack the Overlord and not the base. Just a slight lack of attention to detail there. Looks like now he is retargeted onto the base, which probably will go down. Thors destroy buildings. Swarm Host getting ready to fire. Should take out this Thor. 
without any problem. And the fifth base is up for Gil. Of course, his other fifth having been taken out by the Swarm Hosts. Got a Viking on the prowl. Looking for overlords, presumably. I'm actually, I'm not sure that tanks are really going to be a good choice from here on out. With this amount of swarm hosts, where did that scan go down, by the way? I don't know. But um, with tanks, or I'm sorry, with swarm hosts out, the tanks are going to do a lot more work against themselves than they will against the Zerg. I think at this point, you have to go into mass ravens, maybe? There's no easy solution, but I think it has to be Mass Ravens to throw down point defense drones against the Locusts and possibly you know, to get off Seekers or Auto Turrets against the Swarm Hosts when they're on cooldown. But there's no freaking way that these tanks are going to be able to hold off these waves of Locusts. No way. And this is what I'm talking about here, by the way. There were, what, five, six tanks there that all just got destroyed by the Locusts. Drones transferring. Uh, I'm actually not sure where they're going. I, are they just taking... I, I think they're taking the long way around. Or, okay, maybe... Uh, I think Exile might want to free up some supply. Looks like that's what he wants to do. Yeah. Has a huge bank already, so freeing up supply right here is actually a pretty darn good idea. This army is going to be massive now after freeing that supply up. Of course, the income is rather low, as we just saw. But I, uh, I think it looks like Exile wants to end the game. Based on... Uh, yeah, there we go. Now there's tons of supply for Broodlords and Hydras. Yeah, yeah, I just realized that now when I took a look at the um when I took a look at the bank and the supply, I figured uh that that was a, a free up, which makes sense. Now, granted, there could come a point in the game where Exile needs to make more drones, but I think right now, especially if he's looking to end the game, to actively push, then that is definitely the right move. Of course, if he is just kind of accepting the super long game, then he might want to keep some more drones around and just keep trading with the free units. I think this planetary stands absolutely no chance right now. And is Gil freeing up supply as well? He does have too many SCVs. Yeah, that base stood absolutely no chance. This base is back up and mining. Of course, building armor and high sec both researched. Lurkers on the way. Broodlords incoming. And we have 30 swarm hosts. I, I actually don't know if I've ever seen that many in Legacy of the Void. <clears throat> but they are worth their weight in gold. At this point, I mean, if Exile does it right, he pretty much, uh, he might not have to spend resources on units for the rest of the game. If he just keeps, you know, keeps the swarm hosts protected and keeps getting off waves of locusts like this one that take out key units from the mech player. Viking coming in, he has a dream. The dream is shattered. Forward base, again, trying to be retaken by Gil. Not sure how that's going to work out. Until he... The, the problem is, until Gil deals with the Swarm Hosts, and by the way, it looks like BCs are his, uh, are his attempt to do that, but until he deals with the Swarm Hosts, he's not going to be able to hold any of these bases for long. I like the addition of Lurkers as well. They're just going to help lock down 
any position, uh, wh whichever position that Exile chooses. So once again, just swarming this base. And this is a crucial base for Gil. Wall will go down very quickly. Locust might actually get this planetary right now. Looks like they just barely don't, but the next wave will certainly get the job done. Heck, the, uh, the Lurkers might actually do it. It looks like they will. The Lurkers along with the Broodlings. Now, the one issue here is that the BCs... Where the heck are they? They're there. The BCs have, until now, gone undetected. Where are those additional star parts? They're there. So, that is the one possible saving grace for Gil. Swarm hosts obviously cannot attack battle cruisers nor can lurkers in fact the anti-air is actually really light right now for exile one hydra four corruptors and five queens so these bcs can present very serious problems for exile mineral bank is huge but the gas bank is not and this actually might bring into play the choice to free up all of those drones earlier. So like I said, it's a, a very good choice to create this gigantic army that we see here. But when a tech switch like this comes in and a large gas bank is required, it might end up going back the other way and working against Exile. Yeah, I, uh, I can see that scenario coming right now, man. The teleport comes straight into an army that has virtually no anti-air. Now, st now uh, stuff is going to get crazy, I guarantee. Of course, Yamato Cannon is researched. Lots of swarm hosts are going to go down on the production tab. We see 16 corruptors in production immediately and additional extractors being thrown down as well. Because here is the problem. Like I said, you got enough uh, enough bank to make one large wave of Corruptors. And by the way, Corruptors really aren't that great against BCs anyway. Uh, Parasitic Bomb, I believe. If I'm not mistaken, Exile, correct me. Parasitic Bomb is the optimal choice. One BC teleporting in. This is actually, It's a rather smart play here. Just uh, no need to risk too much. Get one BC in here. Put him to work. The Corruptors will take him out pretty darn quickly. Uh, this, okay, I don't like this. This is too much. So, yeah, these three BCs are going to go down for basically nothing. Good job here uh, from uh, Exile to pull these Corruptors in and clear that up. But this is going to be the big problem now. We've got three, uh, plus three plating, plus two air attack against zero carapace and plus two air attack but transfusions are going down here for Exile. Good job so far. Yamato's going off, blasting a few Corruptors out of the sky, teleporting out as he realized he could not take that fight. Oh, this is a bit risky. I mean, I like the idea. It is, uh, if he can pick off the Extractors, that would be a really big deal. But at the same time, they did not teleport far enough away from the Corruptors to escape. I think the Corruptors can take these down because these are low health. With Focus Fire, I think these are going down. Here goes one. Here goes two. I'm not sure. Okay, if uh, if the BCs fight one at a time, they will go down. By the way, while this is going on, Lurkers are continuing to work away at the natural. And yes, with only one BC fighting there against the Corruptors, it is not enough to take this small force of Corruptors down. A wave of Zerglings is being made, and that's actually uh, it's an interesting choice. It actually could work pretty well, because they, they will run straight past the BCs. Obviously, they will not be able to engage planetaries very well, but if they can get into the infrastructure, if they can get in here, that will be a serious blow, because the Terran's hopes right now are entirely invested in BCs, he, and he's actually completely out of them. Just as I say that, it looks like he wants to tech switch back into Thor's. Uh, off, off the bat, I don't know how I feel about that. I feel like BCs were the best response. Broodlord's coming in, taking out some of the Thor's, and this is kind of what I'm talking about. If these are BCs, it's a completely different game. 
Now, obviously, the Thors are going to take out the Broodlords, but the BCs would trade much more efficiently. Swarm Hosts finally getting back to work after a long layoff, taking out a Planetary Fortress. That uh, will free up the, mat Ugh, the map a bit more for the Zerglings. We take a look at the resources lost so far. Exile is considerably ahead. This base is going to be vital for Gil. Swarm host just waiting. They're like, let me at him, bro. Let me at him. Ling's going to check to see if these bases have been retaken. Exile is going to be very pleased when he sees that they have not. He does, of course, see this base being more, uh, or I should say this planetary being morphed in now. Corruptors, eh, could have gotten to work on this, I guess, from this angle here. With the, what is it, Caustic Spray? Is that the name of the ability? I always forget. It is, in fact, Caustic Spray. Uh, I'm not actually sure if they would have been able to take it down. And you do have turrets coming up, and of course there could have been a repair. Ouch, that really hurts. I don't know why the Fusion Core was up here. But that is a brutal blow to take for Gil. Oh dear. Could have, uh, could have been even worse there with the Widow Mines. And honestly, this is still even worth it. Even with losing all of those Zerglings to the Widow Mines up there, picking off the Thor and the tank is super important due to how low Gil is on gas right now. Oh, I just saw what you said now. Your Swarm Host didn't return home when you told them to. <laughs> Ouch. But this is becoming a very scrappy game, and I think the second half is going to be all about efficient trades. Losing these starports hurts a lot. I, I believe all three of them are going to go down. Eh, two battle cruisers. Battle cruisers are not very good. Yeah, these these would have gone down. Battle cruisers are not very good against zerglings. Let me tell you. I need to remind uh, some of some of my Zerg opponents on ladder about that. Terran tier one kills Zerg tier three. It's not balanced. It's like, dude, your Zerglings, uh, they they run past my battle cruisers and they kill my Thors, bro. Come on. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I don't have a problem with it. I think that's totally fine. But I can't tell you how many times I've heard that on ladder. Your tier one bio is killing, killing my ultralisks. That's just how, how the game works, man. <laughs> I'm sure this guy was furious with you going swarm host. Trust me. But I'll tell you what, like, uh, as I was saying on stream yesterday, I'm not sure you were here for it. Like, I hate free units. I wish they, I wish they weren't in the game in any capacity. I don't like auto turrets. Uh, of course, they cost energy, but still, you know, they're like, they're quasi-free units. Uh, I don't have a problem with, with Broodlords at all. But, Swarm Hosts. Swarm Hosts, I don't like them, I hate the design, but I don't think that they're overpowered. Because, uh, the current version of Swarm Hosts, anyway. Because you have a long time to be able to kill the Swarm Hosts while they're on cooldown. So it's like, yeah, it's really frustrating to deal with waves of locusts. Really, really frustrating. But after the locusts are gone, like I said, you've got considerable time to try to kill the swarm hosts when they just can't defend themselves. So I, I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's that big of an issue. I hear a lot of mech players complain about it. But at least as bio. I don't see it as a big problem. I don't think it's great design, like I said, but I don't see it as a balance issue. And yeah, that poor queen. Uh, it was like two queens and one Hydra or something. <laughs> Just got owned. Look at this standoff we have here. <laughs> they're, both, they're both like in foxholes right next door to one another. Like, you know, here's the ground. One foxhole is here for the Terran and the other foxhole is there. And they're both just sitting there, like, waiting to attack what's above when they're right next to each other. <laughs> it's like one overseer here, 
or one scan or raven here would make all the difference in the world in this non-engagement. But so right now we've got a bit of a regrouping, and by the way, I actually really like this choice as much as I despise playing against Mass Queen. Let me tell you, it drives me crazy. Um, strategically, I love this choice from Exile because he had a mineral bank, didn't have much gas, but had a mineral bank, and got out all of these queens, which uh, most of which are at really high or full energy, and I think that's really going to come through in the clutch for him. Greater Spire will go down. I believe the uh, first Spire was already taken out as well as the Spawning Pool. Oh, I'm sorry, the first Spire was not taken out. That was just a really nice move. It was just a, a preemptive Spire going down. So yeah, uh, nice uh, quick response there from Exile. All it takes is one scan. One scan. Like I said, one scan. There's still one Overseer. One Overseer. Now, granted, like, you can't really know about it. Um, Exile, it'd be really tough to spot these Widow Mines. But now that the tanks are in vision, if one Overseer comes forward, he can pick off a lot of tanks. Oh my goodness, the Mass Queen <laughs> push against the Planetary Fortress. Got transfusions going down. Oh my goodness, Mass, mass Queen plus transfusion against Mass Repair. Who wins? <laughs> oh, so you actually did know that the, the Widow Mines were there and that's why you didn't unburrow. Yeah, that, that was smart. Just, uh, just keep it there. So it looks like we're going to have a temporary retreat. I think ultimately that's probably the best decision. It would be better to use the transfusion energy on, you know, on key units, I believe. Now this is a really important base, so obviously if it went down that would have huge ramifications particularly for the gas of the mech player uh, with this base mining out sh uh, shortly. Eh, I guess maybe not that shortly. These ones are, some, some of these are really low, but yeah, some of them are actually still quite high, but drop down to 12 as we look at it. Plus three ship weapons on the way. It's quite a vulnerable greater spire, but it's one of those examples where you just throw it down like as where wherever your screen is, provided it's somewhere close to one of your bases, you desperately want that building up. You're doing so many other things and you just throw down the building with basically the first drone that you grab. So yes, I do like this move much better. Queen's coming back with some units for support. Caustic Spray going down on the Planetary, Repair going down as well, but eventually this is going to be taken out. There aren't enough SCVs here to repair, and some of the SCVs are in fact being focused down. Great job there from Exile. This is a really good game here. Really close game. Another Thor push is actually going to come up to this critical base of Exile. As we see, he really does not have a bank. Uh, decent amount of gas. But when it comes to making a hive tech army, that's really not that much. Uh-oh, Corruptors need to be careful not to fly over the Thors. That could be really ugly if they're focused. They are not, fortunately, for Exile. One Corruptor does go down... That's about it. The Zerglings are really getting to work here on the Thors. Queens transfusing one another. The Thors, if they focus this base, will be successful. They do get it. Is it worth the trade? I'm really not sure. Because these units are so important. So important. It but it actually it looks like they're going to escape. I thought for sure they were going to go down. No transfusions on, on these queens here. That hurts. I think Exile is focusing elsewhere. Caustic Spray on this command center. 
No cancellation there. And we're actually in a position now where I, I think for the first time in the game, I actually favor the Terran player. Now, he doesn't have a gas bank. He has remade his fusion core, which I did miss. I'm not sure where it is. Where is the fusion core? Okay, he has remade it in his main base. I thought for sure that those Thors were going to go down. I, I'm not sure why I thought that, honestly. But would have paid closer attention. I probably would have realized that they um, that they were going to win. Yeah, a lot of queens went down in that fight. But I think it was necessary to take that engagement. That was a really important base. There's no bank right now. It's going to be like, this is going to come down to swarm hosts. That's uh, at, at least to survive into the next stage of the game. Because we have... Uh, an army supply, which favors the mech player. Worker supply, which actually favors the mech player as well. Income is roughly equal. When mules are dropped, it will spike up for the Terran, of course. Picking off units like this is really important. But the battle cruisers are coming back in again. I don't know if we're going to have an adequate number of corruptors. Right now, of course, that is going to be more than enough to deal with two battle cruisers. But if some more get out, then it's going to pose serious problems. Nice positioning on the tanks here. They're going to hit any ground units that try to approach this planetary fortress. Thors come down here to re-secure this location. Couple of Broodlords being morphed in. Good choice here. This is really, really close. And it's a really good game so far. Been very competitive throughout. And honestly, I, I must say, this is I, I think both players here are playing uh, are, are playing quite well. Like if I watch this replay without seeing the league borders, I would definitely be thinking uh, I, I would definitely think that this is you know, like high high plat like plat one, maybe even uh, like a, a diamond three level game. Haven't seen any huge blunders from either player. Haven't seen any like really questionable decisions. This has just been a, a solid game all around. These swarm hosts are still just chilling here. I'm guessing that Exile is not uh is or wait, they by the way, I actually don't even know this. I should know this, but I don't. They have to unburrow to fire, correct? I know, of course. In Heart of the Swarm, they did not have to unburrow. They could fire while burrowed. But, um, yeah, I have gone against Swarm Hosts only a few times on ladder. Very, very rarely do I go against them. But, yeah, I'm almost positive they have to uh, unburrow to fire. And if that is the case, then it is, in fact, better to keep them burrowed here. Because as soon as they unburrow, they're going to get wrecked by this tank line. Another key engagement there for Exile, by the way, picked off a lot of expensive units for Gil. Oh, really? Okay, I actually did not know that. So, they can fire while burrowed. Didn't want to give up their position. Or, or, yeah, so you didn't want to give up um, or uh, let him know that they were there. I understand that. Can wait, wait until the tanks are gone and then maybe push in and try to pick off some infrastructure. So, yeah. Plus, it's also giving you intel on whatever units run past you. So yeah, I, like I said, I uh, do understand that. This gas is so important for Gil. I actually would uh, actually would love to see this refinery get focused on, even though it's not mining right now. But yeah, I mean, obviously taking out the base is another way of taking out the refinery too. There's just so much action going on, and I'm trying to like look at the mini map while I'm looking at the engagement on screen, making some questionable calls myself. I will say it is actually it's a bit challenging to observe and to cast at the same time. It's fun though. We have another push, but I've got to question this. These tanks are not uh, are not going to get anything done really. And they're so important to keep alive 
defensively to secure bases like this, or at least to buy time against Locusts? Definitely have to question that. So that would that would be uh, one of the first questionable decisions I've seen from Gil, where he really, really needed those units. I will say, though, so he's playing mech, and obviously he's made a lot of turrets and a lot of planetaries, but Gil has been consistently sending units out to attack throughout the game. Ironically enough, I think that's part of what has worked against him, because he's done a lot of economic damage, but he has paid very dearly for it. Going up now to plus three air attack, plus two carapace, also for air. Just going to make things even more difficult for Gil, who has a huge mineral bank. But again, the problem is gas, and that is often the case when it comes to playing mech. Beautiful position on the lurkers here. Just kind of gradually hacking away. You know, they could be a little bit closer, but then they would be in turret range. So just, like I said, gradually hacking away at the SCVs as they run past. Wait, do, am I seeing this correctly? So I think the... Wow, that's crazy. So they're attacking, but the SCVs are automatically dodging it. <laughs> I just realized that. That's pretty funny. So while it sucks to lose the lurkers... Realizing that battle cruisers are back in play is really important, and we do have a, a hydralisk den coming back down as a response. Already, a few corruptors out there, not too many, in fact, not nearly enough. Eight corruptors against eight battle cruisers, we all know which way that's gonna go. But, like I said, valuable intel seeing those battle cruisers allows for a response, and the response, as I said, is going to be hydralisks. Might even see more Corruptors mixed in. Maybe. There just isn't much gas right now to go around. Yeah, he definitely didn't like your Lurkers there. One base on my side I didn't see that was untouched and would have made a huge difference. Um, I'm assuming you're referring to this base? Oh, I'm sorry, uh, to this base here. Yeah, for sure. Mining from here would have been huge. Because he has to push across so much creep to get to this. <laughs> this is intense. <laughs> this really is intense. And my goodness, uh, I'm not going to lie. I was a bit, we'll say, cautious about casting an hour-long game. And when you said it's mech versus swarm host, I'm thinking, mech versus swarm host, really? How exciting can this be? But I know that... Uh, I know that if you say it's an exciting game, it's probably going to be an exciting game, and this game has definitely delivered. This has been a great game. I can certainly say one of the most exciting, if not the most exciting, Mech vs. Swarm Host game I've seen outside of, uh, outside of the pro level. Fantastic game so far. And like I said before, I think it's... Oh, the, the scan does come down, and of course it's right when the location is revealed by this attack. So yeah, uh, good job there from Gil to be right on top of that. Gets another scan off. Is Yeah, scan is long enough for the normal attack of a battlecruiser to take out the swarm hosts, but an orbital command went down for that. So three swarm hosts for an orbital command. In this situation, uh, I don't know. Uh, that, that could be worth a trade. So we do have the push now coming in. And while it seems like you know this is a useless building, when it comes down to these scenarios, these scrappy base trade slash base race games, even pickoffs like this dead refinery are really important. Because the, these battle cruisers... I think these battle cruisers are I mean, they're borderline unstoppable. They might be straight up unstoppable. With this so I'll tell you right now, this army is not stopping this amount of battle cruisers, especially with a raven for point defense drone. This is going to come down to a base trade. This is going to come down to a base trade and picking off like I said the uh, things like the dead refinery there is actually really important. Widow mine shots go off and kill two swarm hosts. Two swarm hosts go down. That is so important.
Oh, s bro, are you serious? Lurker Den goes down. That's also a big deal, by the way. Even though there isn't much of a bank, burrowed units are so important in uh, in this scenario. Bro, I'm going to have to check that out. Uh, if you can send me a text. Maybe you did already. I, s I saw that I got some text messages come in, but I, I didn't check them yet. But yeah, if you can send me a, a link to the trailer or whatever, I will gladly check that out. But we do have a, a, a base race. <clears throat> and it's... Like, it's kind of a slow base race, because you've got this really slow mech army against this slow zerg army, but, again, the zerg cannot engage this. He cannot, not even with these full energy queens. They're not going to be able to keep the corruptors alive against Yamato cannon. It looks like Exile wants to pull back to defend, but I, I don't think that's the right decision. Un uh, unless Gil teleports away because he because he doesn't think he can take the engagement or something okay uh i did not see the rest of these corruptors here but this is still going to be really close we've got 16 corruptors versus 13 battle cruisers this uh this raven for point defense drone is really important that will uh that will buy a lot of time against those corruptors obviously there's going to be uh there are going to be a lot of transfusions as well we're shaping up for a crazy battle here. Exile is positioning to take the fight. And in this scenario, even though I do genuinely believe that the mech army wins this, since all of these battle cruisers have Yamato cannon, I do think the mech army wins this, but he might want to play it safe and just teleport. Okay, if he doesn't have Yamato cannon, he should definitely... I'm going to say, just to be safe, he should not engage this army. Again, with the trans, uh, the transfusions. Point... Oh, uh, no. The Seeker Missile's the wrong call. He should have gone with... Um, he definitely should have gone with a point defense drone. The Corruptors come in. Queens are getting ready to transfuse. Yamato Cannon's going off. And I think we even have... Uh, we've got one Thor... It has to come all the way down and around. The Queens are focus firing down. <laughs> oh, are you kidding me? They're focus firing down... The BCs denying BC after BC without getting Yamato's off. The Corruptor count is much, much lower now. I cannot believe that Exile actually took that fight. What an absolutely insane engagement. Holy crap. Very, very well done there from Exile. That was nuts. I think there, there was just... Uh, really really slight misplay or i should say uh just the the wrong decision was made it's hard to make that call but with a raven going for a seeker missile instead of point defense drones i think was a a, a critical error now having seen how that fight played out and with the battle cruisers being focused down uh, quite a few of them before getting Yamato's off. I'm not sure it would have gone to Gil with the point defense drone. It would have been closer for sure, but I'm not sure it would have gone to him. And it also goes back to what I was saying before. That once he used Yamato on the buildings, uh, he used, I think, a couple of Yamatos on the buildings. I think he should have teleported away. You do not want to take a potentially game deciding engagement without all of. Uh, the possible tools at your disposal. He should have waited for Yamato on all of his BCs before trying to take that engagement. And now with that being said, that was a phenomenal job by Exile to press for that engagement, to focus down a number of those battle cruisers before they got off their Yamato cannons. That was just awesome. Exile says he knew he could take it as long as he had the queens with him. Honestly, if I'm the Zerg in that situation, because I've lost to mass BCs as Zerg before. And I know how hard it is to deal with them. I know how frustrating it is, especially when they're uh, Yamato blasting you and then teleporting away. It's, it's pretty infuriating. I've said many times, I think it's downright broken. Um, but that's kind of how StarCraft 2 is right now. You have to deal with broken... Uh, broken units, broken abilities with broken units and broken abilities of your own. But yeah, so I would not have felt so confident to take that fight.
there were, if I recall correctly, 13 or 14 BCs and roughly the equivalent in Corruptors, of course, with, I think, like 10 to 15 Queens as well. But there was a Full Energy Raven in there and there was a Thor as well. Another BC is going down, even though it has Teleport. That's going to hurt a lot. Every unit is critical, as we can see. 87 army supply to 87 army supply. It does not get closer than this. I can only imagine, man. Yeah, I'm sitting on the edge of my seat, and I'm just casting it. And when the ladder points are at stake, you know shit's real. <laughs> Say what you will about, uh, about ladder warriors, ladder heroes, such as ourselves. But I want those ladder points, man. I work for those ladder points. That's my reward. Of course, the league border is eventually the ultimate reward, but you need the ladder points on the way to get there. <laughs> it's serious business. <laughs> so we do have what appears to be one final army of battle cruisers. I say final because the gas income is nil. And I don't think another base will be taken for Terran for the rest of this game. And only half of the Battlecruisers are fighting right now. The Corruptors come in and pick off with at least one. And only, I'm going to say, one to two Corruptors went down for it. Half of the Battlecruisers were away from the battle. So they were just cruising. Okay, awesome. Thanks, T-Pain. We'll check that out. Okay, so my prediction is wrong. I was, uh, I said I don't think another base will be taken for the Terran in this game. But here we are. Of course, it is not fully mining yet. And Queens, and Corruptors, and Swarm Hosts are coming in. So I don't know if it ever will mine. Yamato does get off. A second Yamato gets off. Transfusion's going down like crazy. But we've had four, soon to be five Yamatos. Six Yamatos going off. The Corruptors are all going down. Seven. Every single one of the BCs did get their Yamatos off before being taken down. All of the Corruptors are about to go down, I think, but the Transfusions are so clutch. Two Corruptors remain. The BCs teleport out and, oh dear, I don't know about this. They teleport straight to their deaths. There are Transfusions available. One Queen does go down. A second Queen is about to go down. Just barely runs away. Probably the safer decision to get away there for Exile. Gil is on his last leg with 43 supply, 39 of that in army supply. I think that's all BCs. Okay, uh, I'm completely mistaken. Yeah, 39 supply in freaking uh, BCs. I didn't realize that he had only two BCs. He does have nine Widow Mines, two BCs, one tank, two Liberators. Holy, that is rather unfortunate for, uh, for Gil. Rather clutch for Exile. The Corruptor spawning right on top of the battle cruisers but the base does go down further crippling the income and by crippling i mean reducing to zero for exile swarm hosts going to put away this refinery which stands for all of the terran's hopes this game he needs that gas we've got 31 supply to 116 Widow Mines need to burrow. Uh, do they have Drilling Claws? Does it even show? Well, we'll find out when they try to burrow. If they try to burrow. They do have Drilling Claws. Nice. Wow. Nice pullback there. Quick reaction from Exile. That would have been really rough. The game is going to come down for Exile to this final base. There is actually a huge mineral bank. Now that I look at it. Okay. I was about to say, now that I look at it, if... Gil goes with a huge wave of blue, f excuse me, he doesn't have blue flame research, but uh, Hellions, he can do crippling economic damage, but he would have to outrun and outposition the swarm hosts. So, for example, if the swarm hosts are here, uh, here taking out these bases, and he gets the Hellions around up this way, he can permanently cri uh, cripple the economy of exile. But he will have to constantly play that game of dancing around the swarm hosts for the rest of the game. He is, in fact, going for Hellbat Snell, and he's going for a bio transition. He's not going to have any bio upgrades, and he does not have any gas. So this is actually just going to be mass marine. Like, he might try to get stim and combat shields. Might. 
Obviously, they're going to be unupgraded as well. I honestly, I think maybe mass widow mine, like getting as many widow mines as you can afford, plus one attack. That uh, that's not the way to go. I can tell you that for sure. That is not worth 100 gas. I would much ra uh, rather have four Widow Mines. I think as many Widow Mines as he could afford with this amount of gas would have been the only prayer. It's all going to come down to these Swarm Hosts. If Gil can take out the Swarm Hosts, I think eventually he might, might be able to deal with the Queens. And provided he's using ground units the entire time, he can... Uh, he can completely negate the Corruptors. Now, from Exile's perspective, Exile has to protect this base. It's mining out right now, uh, but he really needs this gas. He needs all of the resources he can get. And obviously, if he can get this base, that would be a complete game changer. I would say that's going to be a game sealer. Going with Swarm Hosts here is a great decision, obviously, the more free units, the better. There's already a considerable amount of swarm hosts out there, a rather terrifying amount for the Terran. 18 swarm hosts, a roach warren now going down. Relatively inexpensive unit to make that will do well against hellbats and marines. So not bad to have that tech available. And by the way, if um, if Gil is going to clear creep like this, I think he would be best served to clear creep to this base and to try to take this base. Either way, he's going to have to spend the rest of the game running from swarm hosts. So these Hellbats are going down, and holy crap, here we go, we've got the Marines and the Hellbats coming in exactly like I said, fighting while the swarm hosts are away from home. Queens are going down left and right. This is actually this is huge for Gil, and this is disastrous thus far for Exile, but he is getting his swarm host back into position. They do not yet have locusts off cooldown, so this base is going down. Now, a small bank has been accumulated for Exile, but he has to just buy time until locusts are available. They are available now. And Gil, at all costs, cannot engage the Locusts. The best move for Gil is to try to bait the Locusts and run away. He cannot engage. And of course, for Exile, he wants to try to trap this army into a position where they have to engage the Locusts. And it looks like Gil's not paying attention right now. The Locusts are fired, and they're going to wipe out this army. A second reinforcing group does come in and is able to maybe pick off a Locust, maybe? But by the time he gets up here, as long as he's running on creep and the Locusts are, are I'm sorry, the Swarm Hosts are running away on creep, I don't think this, uh, this army is going to be able to catch the Swarm Hosts before more Locusts are available. Transfusions are going down. This is an absolutely insane game. Another queen falls. We have two full energy queens left. They are not being focused at the moment. But there's absolutely no mining for either player. GG is called. Oh my goodness. What a fantastic game. Wow. Bravo. What an absolutely fantastic game. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I don't regret one minute of this one hour and three minute long cast. That was incredible. Bravo. Yeah, I mean, that just came down. You know what? No, screw it. We're going we're gonna to take a look at what was left here. So obviously the Swarm Hosts did come through in the clutch, but it's not as straightforward as it seems. Because as I was saying, if the Terran player can manage to bait the Locusts and just run while keeping out of range. In fact, now that I think about it, 
if he would have morphed the Hellbats into Hellions, baited the Swarm Host, so run in, attack them, pull back once the, swarm, uh, the Locusts are cast, and just stay out of range and push in again as soon as they expire. If he would have done that, when his entire army was joined up. So if we remember, he had a small force here and a small force running up to reinforce. If he would have done that, used those maneuvers while the entire army was together, I'm not sure... I'm not sure Exile would have, uh, would have held. He, he may have. Like, it, it just... It would have been super, super close. But Exile did a great job of constantly pulling back to creep constantly just buying time for the next wave of locusts to be available and then casting them and of course getting off transfusions with the queens to keep everything that he possibly could alive just an awesome game there of course i will be uploading this one to youtube wow